Um, so we're going to be performing capital extension first. Um, and with this, the patient is going to be in a prone position. Um, they're going to be with their head just beyond the edge of the table. So if you want to get into position here, awesome. All right, so you want to make sure you at least have a hand underneath to let the patient know that you're going to be supporting them. Um, and what they're going to do is look, have them look straight at the wall. Wonderful. Put a hand there to support, and you're going to push against the back of the head. One, two, three. Don't let me push you down. Good job. Okay. And that is capital extension. All right, this is going to be capital flexion. And for this, the patient is in supine. Um, and you're going to ask the patient to tuck their chin into their neck. All right. You're going to place your hand underneath their chin and you're going to pull straight up and ask them to resist you. One, two, three, don't let me pull you up. Okay. This is going to be cervical flexion. On this, the patient is supine and you're going to ask them to lift their forehead straight up to the ceiling. You're going to place a hand underneath the back of their head for support and push down on the forehead and ask them to resist you. Count of three, don't let me push you down. One, two, three. All right, good. Uh, this is cervical extension. Um, the patient is in prone, and you're going to have them uh, bring the back of their head straight up to the ceiling. Wonderful. You place a supportive hand underneath the forehead, and you push down with on the back of the head, and ask them to resist you. On the count of three, don't let me push you down. One, two, three. Good. This is cervical rotation. Um, first, you would want to ask the patient to turn their head to either side. If they can do that, they are at least a three. Uh, to test one side, you would have them turn into that position. And want to place your hands on either side around the temporal area. And you're going to try and pull them out of this position. So they have to resist your pressure to pull them out. On the count of three, hold this position. Don't let me pull you out. One, two, three. Good job. Um, there is a two for this, so you would have the patient sit up if they're unable to turn their head from side to side. This is gravity eliminated, and you just ask the patient to turn their head from side to side. You could add a little bit of resistance, and that would be a two plus. Okay, so this one's trunk extension. So you're gonna ask your patient to go to the edge of the table and you're gonna actually get up on the table. There we go. And hold their ankles down so that they do not fall. So hold your hands on your chest for me. Okay, so you're gonna come up to a tabletop, even with the tabletop is a three. If you come up a little bit farther, that's a four, and if she can hold this, that's a five. Okay, so this one is trunk flexion. So you're going to start with a three. So we're going to see if our patient can um, bring her arms out like this and come back up into a flex position. Good. And then we want to make sure that she clears the inferior angle of the scap. So that's a three. She would do this for a four. Same thing. Come back up. Good. That would be a four. And then hands behind the head. That's a five. So clear the angle. Good. So now we're going to check the external obliques and the internal obliques. So you're going to ask your patient to take her um, right arm to her left leg to come up like that. Perfect. Clear the inferior angle. And that would be a three. In that position, she's working her right externals and her left internals. Um, so for a four, she's going to put her hands across her chest and do the same thing. Come up. Perfect. And then a five would be by the head. Just like that. Good. So this is for the quadratus lumborum, so it's the QL. So you're going to ask your patient to hike their hip, which is kind of just like lifting right up off the ground. Perfect. Okay, so she's at least a three, so you're going to lay on the table. So since she was at least a three for the QL, now we put her on the table and ask her to hike her hip again, like this one, and then you're just going to pull. And that would be like a four or five. So for hip flexion, you're going to have your patient bring her knee up to your hand. And since she can do hip flexion, that's at least a three. And what you're going to do to test her is to stabilize the opposite hip and have her do the same motion and don't let her and push down and don't let her bring her leg down. And that would be a five or a four. And for gravity eliminated, four or two, if she couldn't do that motion, 
you would have her lie on her side. And for two, you will bring her hip into flexion. And for two plus, you would provide resistance on that. So, for sartorius, what you're going to have your patient do to test it is to have their heel at their opposite ankle and bring their heel to their knee. If they can do that motion, it's at least a three. Now to test this position, you will have them bring their heel all the way to their knee, having, holding behind the calf and at the ankle, you will pull down and out, and you'll have them resist that. Now if she could not do that motion, you would have her lie on her back and do the same motion in, in supine, bringing the heel to her knee. So for hip extension, what you're going to have her do is lie prone and you're going to have her lift her entire leg up and if she can do that, great, that's a three. And to test that, you're going to stabilize her opposite hip, have her bring her leg up and at the distal ankle, push down and that is a four or five. Now for if she could not do that motion, you're going to have her lie on her side. So, to so for two, you are going to guide their leg back into extension and providing resistance will give them a two plus. So to test hip extension but isolating the glutes, what you're gonna have her do is similar to a hip extension, you're gonna have her bend her knee. And what you're gonna do is help the patient bring their leg up from the table. So if you do that, good, so that's at least a three. Now to test that, you're gonna do the same thing, provide stabilization of the opposite hip, push down, good. Now, so for a two, you're gonna have her knee bent and guide her back into extension. For two plus, you'll provide some resistance to that. So for hip abduction, you're going to position them in sideline and have the patient lift their leg straight up. And now to test that, you're going to be stabilizing the iliac crest. And you're going to have them lift up. And at the knee, you will be pushing down. Good. For two, for hip abduction, you're going to have her do a snow angel. Just like that. For hip adduction, you will have them positioned like this. You will have the patient bring their leg straight off off the table into adduction. To test them, you're going to stabilize at the iliac crest and just above the knee, and you will push down. Good. And for gravity eliminated, it's the same thing as a hip abduction. You'll have them into snow angel and bring their leg in. So for hip internal rotation, you will have your patient bring their ankle out and you will apply pressure at the distal ankle and push them in. So for two, for hip internal rotation, you will have them lie supine, bring their foot out and have them roll in. So for hip external rotation, you will have the patient bring their ankle in, good, and you will apply pressure in the inside ankle and push out. So for a two, for hip external rotation, you will bring the patient in to internal rotation, have them roll their ankle or their hip out. Okay, so in this position, we are testing um, collective knee flexion. So to begin, you will have your patient in prone position, and you will have them see if they can flex their knee and bring their foot to their butt. Okay, and then to test this, okay, so that's at least a three. And then to test this for a four or five, you will have them come into this position, stabilize at the iliac crest on the same side, and place resistance on the ankle, and you want to explain to them not to break this position. So I'm going to apply pressure, and don't let me break you. Good. And so for a two for this position, you will just have them sideline, and you will guide their leg back into knee flexion. And for a two plus, you can add resistance. Okay, so in this position, you are doing the same thing with knee flexion, but this time you are isolating the hamstring muscles. So in order to test this again, um, you would just have them bring their foot to their butt. So she can do it, so she's at least a three. And then for this one, to isolate the semitendinosus, you will bring the toes in, to in, and then you will have them hold that position and um, apply stabilization at the iliac crest again, and then apply resistance at the distal ankle again. So don't let me break you. All right, so that's the semitendinosus. And then to test the semimembranosus, you will point the toes out. So same thing, apply stabilization at the iliac crest, apply resistance at the distal ankle, and don't let me break you. 
Good. Okay, so in this position, we are going to test knee extension. So you're testing the quad muscle. And you will have the position seated in um, short sitting on the table. And you will have your stabilization behind their knee, not lower or above, just behind, right in the top of the space. And you will have them um, kick your hand out like this to test if they can do it. So she's at least a three in that position. And then to test the muscle, have her kick out again. Not fully extended though. Apply resistance at the distal ankle again and push back. Don't let me break you. Good. So she's at least a four. This is testing um, knee extension in a two position. So you will have your patient sideline and you will have them, you will guide their leg through knee extension. And at two plus, you could add resistance. Okay, so in this position, we are testing the gastroc muscle and the soleus muscle, but there is a difference. If you want to test the gastroc, you will have them without their knee bent, and if you want to test the soleus, you will have them with their knee bent. But for this one, it's just heel raises, so the number determines the grade that they get for the MMT. So to get a five, you need to do at least 25 heel raises. To, do, to get a four, you need at least 10 to 24. To get a three, you need one to nine heel raises. A two is a lift, but not fully off the ground. And a one is just a contraction of the muscle. So in this position, we are going to test the tib anterior muscle. So you will ask, their, ask your patient to dorsiflex and invert and you will be stabilizing at the ankle and applying resistance at the medial aspect of the foot. And you will ask your patient to not let you push down. So on the count of three, don't let me push you out of this position. One, two, three. Okay, so in this position, we are testing the tip posterior. So you will ask your patient to plantar flex and invert. And you don't want them to bring their foot out of this position. So you will say, I'm applying resistance. Don't let me bring your foot out and up. Okay, so on the count of three, one, two, three. Good. Okay, so for the last one, this is testing um, the peroneals on the side for eversion. So what you're going to do is you're going to ask your patient to evert, bring their foot out, and you will be applying resistance with your back hand. So you're doing all of the turning motion with your the heel, the hand that is at the ankle, and stabilizing under the foot. So. Um, you will not want your patient to bring their foot in. So do not let me bring your foot in. On the count of three, one, two, three. Good. So we're going to check your sh shoulder flexion. Can you do this? And you can. So she's at least a three. And then I have her hold her arm 90 degrees. And then I push down. And since she didn't move, she would be a five. If she was unable to do full range of motion, I would have her lay on her side for two and just hold the weight of her arm and let her move it. And then if she did that, I would add a little bit of resistance. And if she could continue to do that, she would be a two plus. All right, so first raise the anterior, I would have my patient see if they could punch my hand. And since she could, I would hold here. Can you pull your arm a little bit? And then I would try to resist. And since she didn't move, she'd be a five. So for a two, I'd have her punch across the table. Okay, so for collective traps, I would have her shrug up, and since she can, I would have her push a little bit, like halfway, and then I'd push against her, and she doesn't move, so she'd be a five. So to isolate the traps, I would stabilize the opposite shoulder, and then resist at the distal humerus, and resist, and that would be a five. And then for middle, I would stabilize the same place, and resist the same place, and her arm would be out to the side, and then this would be for her lower traps. Okay, to check for shoulder extension, I have my patient see if they can bring their arm up, and they can. So I have her bring it halfway, and I would apply uh, stabilization on the opposite side and resistance of the distal humerus, and then push, and that's a five. So for a two, I would hold the weight of her arm and see if she can move it backwards, and she can, so that's a two. And I would try to add a little bit of resistance because she did that without any problem, and she still could do that pretty well, so it's a two plus. So for posterior delt, I would see if she could bring her shoulder up, arm, um, and at 90, and since she can, that's at least a three. Stabilize the same shoulder and resist the distal humerus, and that's a five. So then for a two, I would see if she could bring her arm back, and she can, and if I need it, I can add resistance to make it a two plus. For a reduction, I would see if my patient can do this, and she can. Then I would stabilize 
opposite and it disappears and she can do that. If she was unable to do that, I would lay her down. For a two, I would have her do snow angels. For shoulder external rotation, I would have my patient's shoulder at 90 degrees and see if they could do this first, which she can. So then I would stabilize the shoulder here and resist here, and that would be a five. And then for internal rotation, it's the same position. I would see if she could push inside, and she can. So then I would resist here and stabilize there, and those would be fives. And then for two, I would have her in the same position and just have her drop her arm and see if she could twist it in and out for external and internal rotation. To test the rhomboids, you have your patient laying prone on the table, and you ask to see if they can put their hand behind their back like they're being handcuffed. And then can you take your uh, hand off your back? So that's at least a three. So from there, I would stabilize on the opposite shoulder and then pull out and down, and that's a five. So for pectoralis major, you have your patient see if they can like hug themselves, and then she can, so that would be at least a three. And then I would stabilize on the opposite shoulder and I would grab at her like uh, distal humerus and I would just pull, so that's a five. And then if she was unable to do full range of motion, I would have her uh, test grade two and pull her arm forward. Okay, first for elbow flexion, we're going to have three different muscles we're going to test. We're going to do biceps brachii, brachial radialis, and brachialis. They're all the same motions, but except for uh, different hand placements. So for the first one, it's biceps. See if she can do it, palm up. She can do it, so she's at least a three. I'm going to stabilize at the elbow, resistance at the um, wrist. And then we're going to push down, and she is a five. And then for brachial radialis, we're going to have trick her muscle. She can do it. Same thing. Press down, it's a five. And then palm down, it's going to be the brachial, uh, brachialis. Same thing. She's okay, so for two, we're going to do gravity eliminated. She's going to do the same motion across the table. Go ahead. Elbow extension. Um, for the triceps, have your patient laying prone. See if she can kick back. There she goes. She's at least a three. Have her about there. I'm going to resist um, at the wrist and then stabilize at the elbow. Go ahead. Okay, so for uh, two, gravity eliminated. She's going to do the same motion across the table. For supination and pronation, you're going to have your patient sitting, short sitting. You're going to have their Elbow bent to 90 degrees, and you're going to see if they can supinate. So you start pronated, and you try to open up. So they can, so they're at least a three. You're going to apply your stabilization at the side of the elbow. You're going to have them supinated to start. And you're going to try to bring them into pronation. So you're going to grab just uh, proximal to the hand, so you're not crushing their fingers. You're going to grab them. I'm going to try to break out of the position. Don't only break you. And so she's at least a four or five. For pronation, you're going to have your patient sitting, short sitting again. You're going to have their elbow tucked to their side. And you're going to see if they can go from supination to pronation. So supination to pronation. To apply resistance, you're going to stabilize at the elbow, make sure they're still tucked. Have them pronated. You're going to grab their wrist, but not their hand, and try to move them into supination. So she's at least a four or five. For a two for pronation and supination, you're going to have your patient support their elbow, and you're going to have them pronate and supinate like their Princess Diane wave into a crowd. For wrist flexion extension, you're going to have your patient sitting with their arms supported on the table. You're going to perform wrist extension, so you're going to ask your patient to move their hands up. Excellent. So she's at least a three because she can fight gravity. For resistance, you're going to apply it medially because you don't want to cross the extensor tendons, and you're going to apply it with your resistance um, on the MCP of the hand. So she's at least a four or five. For flexion, you're going to turn their wrist over. You're going to ask your patient to bend their wrist forward, so she's at least a three. For this, you're going to apply your stabilization laterally so you don't cross the flex your tendons of the muscles, and you're going to have them go halfway and apply resistance at the MCP again, which is at least a four or five. For a two for wrist extension and flexion, you're going to have your patient sitting or just standing, and you're going to place your hand on the table, and you're going to ask them to floppy fish, so it's uh, gravity eliminated forward and backwards. So that's a two. For resistance, you can apply gentle resistance across and do the same for the other way. <laughs>